Today, we have Becca Bradshaw on. She is an amazing, amazing hairdresser. She is a shareholding owner and stylist at Sheer Art which is one of the largest summit academy or sorry summit salons on the east coast she's a redkin exchange facilitator who is incredibly passionate about design and finishing and barbering she loves to work with natural texture this woman is so passionate so creative so inspiring what's so important you know about her is this woman she shows up when she does something, she gets fully present in anything she's asked to do. She is a big yes person. So please put your hands together. Say hello to Sambia, <laughs> Sambia ambassador and Redkin Exchange facilitator, Becca Bradshaw. Good Hi, Becca. Morning. Hi, everyone. I am so happy to be with you all today and talk about cutting some shags. We yeah. really want to get into some hair right away. So I can t introduce you. This is my friend right here. We have Ellie. And Hi, she has Ellie. a beautiful color that has been inspired by the Lady Gaga Chromatica Oreos. So my associate put this together and we want to cut a shag on her. We want to be able to cut some of this length off. So we know that when we're cutting shags, a lot of times we look at where we are going to start cutting the shag and then also what type of tool we're going to use when we're cutting a shag. So I like to do things a little differently. And I think after watching this, you are going to like to do them a little differently as well. So we often start at the perimeter when we're cutting shags. But I'm going to say to you, friends, we shouldn't be starting there all the time. Shags always have a little bit of what hanging around the face. If you know what it is hanging around the face, give me a shout out like in the comments. What do we have hanging around the face? Yeah, so we've got like our fringe that hangs in the face. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna separate out that fringe right away. We're gonna look at the recession area that we have right here and the recession area that we have on the opposite side so we can get started cutting our fringe right away. If that sounds different to you than what you're usually doing, type different in the chat box. So we're just gonna clip it out of our way right here with our uh, Sam Via clips. I love these clips because I like to cut hair dry a lot. And these clips have a little polyurethane band on them and they don't leave a bend in dry hair. So we are gonna cut this fringe and we've got it sectioned out almost to the top of the head. On shags, our fringe leaves a little bit more of an impact so we section it out a little bit higher than on some people. So what is a big trend that you are seeing in fringe? Are you seeing full fringes or are you seeing curtain fringes more? Type in the chat box what you think you're seeing. Yes. Yes, full, different. Are a lot of your guests starting to ask for curtain fringe as well? Yes, curtain. I see you, Liz. I see you, Linda. My guests are also coming in and they're asking for curtain fringes. So we are going to be cutting a curtain fringe today on our friend Ellie, and that will be able to open up a lot of this color as well so we can show her off. So when we're cutting a, a shag and we're cutting fringe specifically, a lot of times we'll want to go in with a razor. Now, a razor is a beautiful tool, nothing against the razor, but sometimes we like to use a different tool because we need an end result that will not be given to us with a razor. So for example, our people that have a little bit more blonded hair, like myself, we may not be able to use a razor. Now, why do you think that you might not be able to use a razor on blonded hair? Thank you, Shirley. I see that you are saying that you love my blonded hair. I've got a lot of guests with blonded hair and they are not able to use that razor because the razor might do something too much to their texture. So we have to go in with a pair of shears for that. So the first thing that we're going to do 
is we're going to ask our guest where she wants to see that curtain fringe live. And Ellie here, she wants to see it right about by her nose. So if we're gonna go in and we're gonna go and we're gonna cut it by her nose, we're gonna give her a little tiny guideline first. So we'll take that little tiny guideline, we'll elevate it slightly, we'll bring our shear in and we'll just use a really soft open close technique that we like to refer to as back cutting. It's very much almost like an effleurage motion. Do you know effleurage when you're getting like that nice facial and they're just smoothing over your skin? This is the same kind of technique you're going to be using when you're cutting this fringe. So we're letting just a little bit of this hair fall out of the way, but it's still nice and soft so we can see where our guideline lives. So we're gonna go ahead and continue to put just a little bit more of that guideline in for her and just comb it out of the way, just very softly with our shears. So at this point in time, I'm using my Artist Series shear. One of my favorite shears that Sam has ever, ever come out with. And that's because I can get such great results with it on wet hair and on dry hair. The, that's a great question, Shirley. So I do love the dry cutting shear as well. My artist series shear right now is what I'm using. So now we're gonna go ahead and take that guideline and we're gonna start to elevate this hair in order to give her like that nice, beautiful little curtain that she wants to wear. So when we come in here and we're going to start to elevate the hair, we'll work one side at a time. So right now I'm gonna work on the right side of her head. So if you can see me, say right side of the head in the chat box. So take a look. I'm gonna leave just a little bit of this curtain fringe down so I can grab it in a little bit to create my guide. This will be my shortest piece of the fringe and the rest of it is going to swish off to the side. So we'll be working in the right side of the head. Thank you, I see everybody out there. And we will be elevating this hair so that it lives at a 45 above the horizontal 90. So my comb right now is representing the horizontal 90. The hair is gonna live at a 45 degree angle above that. So my right side of the head, watch my finger angle right here. I have a finger angle that is going to be tighter towards the top of the head and longer towards the outside. I'm gonna pick up my little tiny piece that I had for my guide and then I'm going to come in over the top and I am going to do just a little light point cutting to remove the hair from the head. So what's beautiful about this is we know we're almost creating a straight line here in the hair, just a little bit of softness that's happening here with our shear. And man, we have some hair hitting the floor right now, which is so amazing. Let me turn her so you can see the shape that we're creating. So we're creating just this little swishy curtain fringe off to the side. So we wanna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side, and then I'll let you see just a quick way to put a little extra texture into that. Joey, great question. Am I over-directing to center? You have great eyes, Joey. That is exactly what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be over-directing it to the center because we want the hair to flow away from that center. So if we think about a curtain fringe, shortest in the middle, longest on the corners, it's going to actually flow away from the center. So we've got a lot of things to think about when we're cutting one piece of hair, right? So we're gonna be cutting the left side right now. Oh my goodness. I see that there's a question in the chat box that's asking, what would we do if they had a side part? What do you think that we would do if they had a side part? Would we cut it center? Or would we be working off of the part? Type it in the chat box. 
So again, I'm just going to turn her to the side so you can see my, my finger angle here. My finger angle is going to be shorter towards the top, longer towards the bottom. I'm elevating again at 45 above the horizontal. And I am, thank you, Joey, over directing this to the center in the front. So I can just continue to come in here and make little notches to go ahead and cut off the fringe. And we are going to, in just a moment, show how to come in there and begin to texturize this fringe so we can get a little extra movement in her. So you're getting a overwhelming response of off the part. Off the part, very nice. So if she had a side part, I am not going to cut this center. If she has a side part, I am going to work with whatever part it is that she has. So this is one of the reasons, my friends, it's so important for us to be cutting this fringe in new and different ways. This is why it's important for us to be cutting this fringe dry because we can see exactly where our guest is going to be wearing their hair and we can see exactly what it is and how they want to wear it. It becomes more collaborative at that point. Oh, Kimberly, you love texturizing your haircuts? Me too. I think if there was one thing that I really needed after getting out of hair school, what I needed to learn was how to texturize, right? So we know that we have the tool that is the razor that we can very easily come in there and get texture. But the razor, if you think about it, will start to bevel those hair ends just a little bit. The cuticle will be beveled. So some people, let's say on a very fine blonde hair, or let's say in an area where there is a lot of humidity, you may want to choose a shear. So even if you use texture within that, each individual hair strand is cut so that it gives it a little bit more strength. And Shirley, could I show how much I overdirect the parting with the mannequin face straight on? Absolutely. So here we go, Shirley. The mannequin is straight on. And I will show you exactly what it is. So let's say that she is going to wear it center. I would over direct everything. That is all of these. I could literally put my fingers by her nose and just go ahead and move her straight up to wearing it exactly on the center. Let me move the camera so you can see that just a little bit. And then let me show you again my finger angle from the side. Awesome. Yes. Are you ready to learn a little bit of a new texturizing technique? If you're ready to learn a new texturizing technique, give me a heck yeah in the comments. Very nice. I am ready too. So we'll go in and we'll do one side at a time right now, just so you get a chance to see it in a couple different ways. So I am going to lower her just a little bit so we can get in and get a little bit closer and you can see exactly what's happening. Awesome. Heck yeah, I'm ready to roll with you all. So, one thing I've found with texturizing, it is so important if you want that texture to blend seamlessly with what it is that you're doing, that you elevate the hair the same exact way that you cut it. So we cut this and it was 45 above the horizontal 90. We're gonna come in with that same exact elevation when we come in here with our blenders. So with this section, I'm going to be using my reversible blenders. My reversible blenders are one of my absolute favorite tools. One of my first tools that I bought from Sam. And I am going to be coming in with the reversible blenders, not perpendicular to the hair section, or not parallel to the hair section, but perpendicular. So I'm going to be coming in with these vertically instead Watch me take a few pieces of hair and then toss it away. 
I'll take another few pieces of hair and toss it away. And then another few pieces of hair and toss it away. Now you can see that this fringe section is going to end up much more soft and much more pliable for my guest. Awesome. So I see, Amber, that you're saying you would have let the length fall first so you keep the integrity of the hair. That's exactly what we did. Good, good eyes on that. So we wanted to let that length fall first. Now we're gonna come in and we are going to texturize the hair. So we'll go ahead and we will lift the other side of this as well. We'll over direct. We are going to put this in 45 above the horizontal 90. And now we're going to come in the same way with the shear. We'll take a few peaks and let it fall out, a few peaks and let it fall out, a few peaks and let it fall out. So here is what we are starting to see. I just wanted to mention, I'm really I'm liking how you're explaining the um, texturizing process because you're coming back to the principles and the foundations. I think a lot of times when we get into that texturizing process, we sort of just, hey, okay, let's have fun and just start chopping at it. So you're being very structured and following, uh, following the foundation that you built within the haircut. So great job. Andrew, I think that's one of the most important things that we can look at. So sometimes we are people that are creative, right? So we want to cut something by feel, but what we know that is based in the principles will give us our truest results. So we are creating something right here that we can actually use shears to create a razor type effect on the hair. Here's a good rule of thumb. Everybody say rule of thumb in the chat. Oh, nice. I see Melody, you were asking is the cutting blade on the bottom? Yes, I did put the cutting blade on the bottom for this because I wanted to have the hair just slightly bevel under and I also want to make sure that I'm not getting too much of that flippy up the sort of vibe with these. I want them to lay close to her head. And you, so this is Bethany. This is the beginning of the modern shag. Hi, Andrew. Hey, so kind of a follow-up question. Oh boy, and where'd it go? Oh, here it is. Um, sorry, it moved on me. Katie's asking any reason you're specifically texturizing with elevation? Katie, yes, I think that there is such an important thing that we have to learn about elevation when we're texturizing these haircuts. So if we're able to elevate the hair and then texturize in that same exact way, we're creating something with a shear that can be created with the razor. So think about this. When we elevate a piece of hair and we cut it with a razor, we're going to come in here and we're going to be carving it away, which is taking both length and texture, right? So our good rule of thumb, just like everybody said in the chat, our rule of thumb is that if we are going to texturize hair, we are going to do it in the same elevation that we cut it to create the best results. Very nice, great question. So I like to trim this hair until I am able to get a really beautiful shape just by using finger styling. I don't want to be able to have it fall flat. So that is the proper amount of texture for a little curtain fringe. Oh, it's nice to see all of my friends on here today. Did everybody tune in and watch Sam's live yesterday, the show must go on. Some great education that we're just being able to come up with right here. I watched, I watched. You watched, excellent. <laughs> so we do know that we're doing things differently already by starting in the front of this shag. Somebody asked, is this a good way for us to show the modern shag? This is absolutely a great way for us to show the modern shag. So we want to move on 
And we want to start cutting now the rest of the front of her hair. Oh, I'm so happy to see that everybody was able to, everybody was able to um, go ahead and watch that yesterday. The show must go on. Another thing is that we are always going to have these live videos up again for you. You will able to, you'll be able to go back and view those lives again so you can still get a hold of all of the fabulous free education that we're doing here on the Samvia platform. And I did see that there was somebody that had a question about the color placement in the chat. So the color placement was done by my associate and her name is Taryn Ventura. And I will go ahead and tag her when I post a photo of this haircut later. So you can ask her all of your questions about the color placement. So here is what I want you to see. Let me step out of the way so you can see. Now we are going to be working with the hair that is in front of the ear. So we have the front of her face and then we have the top of the ear right here. We're going to need to personalize this hair that's in front of the ear. You're welcome, Shirley. Absolutely, we wanna give you everything. So this is the hair in front of the ear on the other side. Easy way to find this, grab your comb, place it flat on top of your mannequin head, wherever or your guest, wherever she goes in and she balances, we can go ahead and draw a straight line to the top of the ear and then that will be your hair here. Awesome. Oh, I'm so happy to be here with everyone. Yes, absolutely. So we wanna go ahead and start to put some layering in. We're gonna be working with a similar elevation throughout most of this haircut so that it stays really simple for us. So yes, and Katie has just put um, Taryn's handle in the chat. So if you want to ask her about the color placement, I'm sure she'd be more than happy. So when we start our layers for Miss Ellie, we want to have these layers be about the same length as what the fringe is going to be. So we will take just a little section of her. We'll take a little section right at the front in the top area to go ahead and cut some layers. Now, this elevation, we know that we are going to be cutting it about the same length as what the fringe is. So we can even take a little piece out of the fringe to go in here and do our cutting. So let me just take this down a little bit so I can show you what we'll be doing here. We're going to elevate, we are going to take a little piece, elevate at 45 above the horizontal 90. Everybody say 45 above the horizontal 90. And I will turn it so you can see my shear work at this point in time. So this is my length from my guide. See my guide? And now I'm going to be coming in and I'm going to be taking the hair off using a technique that we call out cutting. So out cutting just means that you're going to take your shear and open close, open close, open close, open close along the way. So I'm going to slide out. Everybody say slide out. I'm going to give myself just a little bit of extra room to do this out cutting. And then I'm going to come in and open close, open close, open close to remove the hair. Ready? Everybody say it out loud if you're watching at home or in school. Open close, 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 open close. And we're starting to just remove a tiny bit of that hair so we can put it into a layer. So, so how come so switching, oh, sorry. How, okay. how come switching to the out cutting technique from point cutting? Oh, that is such a great question. Out cutting, I see it. So we're switching to an out cutting technique. Number one, to give you a couple different ways to be able to cut this to mimic a razor, but also we don't want quite as much texture as we had right here in the fringe. So we did the point cutting and then we followed up with the blending shear. And now we're going to be doing the out cutting to start to give it more of a longer 
stroke with the razor feeling. It is very soft, Rebecca, exactly that. So see the softness that we're creating right here on the side of the shag. Open, close, you guys got it. Do you wanna see it one more time? Excellent. We're gonna move on, we're gonna do it on the other side. This is the left side of Ellie's head. So remember where our sectioning is going to be. We are just going to take a very little section right here at the recession area. So we're separating out the top from the side. And this is where the fringe is going to, or I'm sorry, the layer is going to live right behind the fringe. So how here? would this work on fine hair? And would you adapt anything to finer, finer densities? Yes, uh, that is a great question. Thank you for asking that. So when we come in and we do some of this texture type work with finer hair, we may need to be very careful of where we're placing texture. That is perfect. So the outcutting may preserve some of the perimeter if we're sliding out as we're doing that outcutting. So if we're preserving that perimeter, we can always leave a dropout as well. So see if we have that little drop out, take a look. My perimeter is going to be preserved. What you wanna make sure that you're doing with fine hair is checking and making sure that your perimeter is preserved. So we'll go ahead and we'll continue to cut this other side without cutting. Remember that my guide is coming from wherever my fringe was living. So I will elevate that up to 45 above and let's spin her so you can see the actual motion. And then once I get to where my guide is, I'm going to slide out a little bit to leave it a little bit of room to be able to do the open close, open close, open close with my shear. Ready? Say it at home if you're with me. Open close, open close, open close, open close. I may need to recomb just a little bit Open, close, open, close, open, close, open, close. So I'm saving just a little bit more of that hair through her. Awesome. The mullet cut mixed with the shag. Kelly, yes, it's very cool right now. Did you, anybody see uh, Miley Cyrus did a TikTok performance for the Super Bowl? And the mullet cut that she has, done by our friend um, Sally Hirschberger, I believe, is just beautiful. I think it's so cool. Yes, I love it too. All right, so we can see what's starting to happen with her is we're creating this like wonderful shape up here in the front. Now again, with dry cutting, be very careful that you're molding this and you're starting to have this take place right in front of your guests. So everybody take your fingers up and rub them together like this like in the money symbol. Yes, the money symbol. That's exactly how you're gonna be going in there and doing this dry hand styling on her. So you're gonna be coming in and you're gonna be rubbing your fingers together just a little bit. And if you notice, you can kind of place that just by holding the hair and then rubbing it together to move around to make that just beautiful cut start to take shape. So you can see where her layers are starting to live right here in the face. Let's go ahead and try one more technique with our shear. So another one of the shears that I really, really love over here at Samvia is going to be our slide cutting shear. So the slide cutting shear is brilliant because it has these curved blades. It makes it very, very easy for us to just move through the hair in a beautiful way. I have a question. I would love to hear what you have to say. <laughs> what would you do what if you accidentally you took too much off by accident, which God wow. knows we have all done by accident. Is there a way you would recommend correcting it? I love this question, Bethany. I love the vulnerability and the honesty of it too. So oh, I'm real curious you, to hear your answer. Up. Let's let's go there, Andrew, because like and let's give Bethany some support too in the chat. Like if you've been there, say I've been there. Because listen, I've been there. So if you take off too much by accident, this is perfect because you're using a technique where you're sliding out a little bit more. But here's a technique that might help you 
If you are taking off a little bit too much, you can always come in there, find wherever that piece of hair is that is starting to cause a disconnect. You know what I mean when I'm talking about a disconnect? Yes, Cassandra, yes, Terry, I've been there. So we'll take that little piece of hair wherever it is that's causing that disconnect, we'll pick it up and we'll pick up the hair right underneath it as well. So that hair that's right underneath it, we'll go ahead and we'll take both of those hairs, pinch them, everybody say pinch, perfect. We'll elevate, everybody say elevate, perfect. And now we'll grab our shear and do that little back cutting technique, that little effleurage technique, just like this, to blend those two pieces together. So sometimes, it just needs a little home, a little place to live, if you will. So we can start to see that those are flowing better into each other. If you see it, say, I see it. You know, something I think is so important about what you just shared is sometimes we get so obsessed with, well, things have to blend and all have to touch each other. And I think especially when you chop something off and you're like, oh crap, like this layer is really short and compared to my perimeter. Don't feel like you now have to take this hair that, you know, this is what she's sharing with you. Don't have to take that piece of hair that's this short and connect it to here with some kind of smooth line. There can just be points of not even connection, but just points that start to help to make sense of the difference between the two. Because that's the thing. It's just like you're you're not going to get this to touch this, you know, and look blended. Absolutely not. So sometimes I'm going to show you one more time as we're looking through the front of this, because it's kind of the same thing, right? We have like little baby hairs, short layers, and then long length right here. So we definitely need to have a little bit of like these points of interest, like Andrew was saying. So look, we can go in here, we can grab this little shorter hair, we can grab the one that's underneath it, and then we'll do our pinch and our elevate. Our pinch and our elevate, and now we can come in and just do a little bit of this effleuraging technique. So we're just moving the hair along. Now, the thing that I love about these slide cutting shears is that they are so nice on the hair cuticle again. So for somebody that has ultra blonded hair. For somebody that is living in an area like Tampa, Florida, where it's super humid and their hair might not respond as well to razor cuts, we can give them a sheer cut shag. So look at how it's starting to blend. We'll take our next little piece of our layer, we'll pinch, we will elevate, and we will go in here and start to remove just a little bit of hair. So see how nice it's starting to look on this side where it is that we are starting to form those silhouettes, those layers. Oh, Bethany, I'm obsessed with texture and movement as well. Like one of my favorite things is creating this movement that my guests can just kind of wake up and rake it and go putting in the right products for themselves and then just moving along with it. So we'll go ahead and we'll start to do a little bit on the other side, we can see I've got a darker hair on this side with the color technique. So I'll show you where my guide is going to live. Here's my guide. And then I'm gonna pick up some hair that's underneath it. I'm going to pinch, I am going to elevate, and now I'm going to come in with my shear and do just that little bit of that effleuraging technique. So if you are not as comfortable doing the effleuraging technique and starting to move it back and away. So that technique is going to be done where you're kind of scooping into the hair. You can go ahead and flip your shear around and slide out of the hair. So we'll pick up our guide. We will pick up the bottom piece to it and we will come in and we can actually go ahead and just start to move the hair out of the way just like that. So you're creating some connection from the top to the bottom. 
I see something in the chat about like curly and wavy hair. So this is a dream for our curly and our wavy haired guests. And absolutely, yes, it can be done on straight hair. Yes, so I think there is a difference, right, between like ultra curly hair and then that sort of wavy hair. So this would be great to do on wavy hair. This would be great to do on probably anything except for coily hair. Very nice, I see that some other people are saying that some of these techniques are feeling really similar um, to what they're doing. So if you're learning something so far, type learn in the chat box. That is what we need to talk about right now, making sure that we are learning something today. I'm so proud of everybody who showed up today, giving up some of your time to come and hang out with us on Mannequin Monday. You ready to connect the layers from the front to the back? Very nice, me too. So we're going to go in and as we're creating these layers that are connecting from the front to the back, let me just go ahead and make sure that I am conscientious with my sectioning and that we are moving the front out of the way and clipping it out of the way. So again, we're gonna be using those Sam Via dry cutting clips, amazing for dry cutting. Oh, you guys are more than welcome to my time. This is what we love to do over here at Sam Via. We love to educate and we love it when you walk away learning something that you can use in the salon. So we're going to go ahead and we're gonna come back into this back area. And what we're going to do is we're gonna cut it in bevels. So bevels, if you want to think about it, are kind of like a pie. We know where the center is in the back. So we'll go ahead and we'll make that center line in the back. And then we know that there are going to be more changes of movement than just these two quadrants. So we're going to divide it down once more so that they kind of look like pieces of pie or pieces of pizza. Ugh, I love pizza. Excellent question. I see that there is a question in the chat box, Andrew, about if clients have finer and thinner hair, do I recommend the shag haircut? Yes, so here's what's interesting. I actually have very fine hair and it is all about how far down you layer. So we're gonna move into that right now. We're going to start to look at the layer shape here in the back of the head. So let me give you kind of another like rule of thumb, right? Everybody say thumb, rule of thumb in the chat. So if they have fine hair, you may want to layer only down to the crown area. Everybody say crown. Fine crown. Very nice. So if they have a little bit thicker hair, you may be able to come in and layer this down to the occipital. Say medium occipital. Very nice. So if they have thick hair, you may be able to layer it all the way down to the perimeter. Is that helpful? If that helps, say thank you. Perfect. Yes, so we are going to start and we're gonna start right here in the crown in one of these bevels. We're going to take a little piece of something else that we have done before and we're going to come back in and we are going to use a slide cutting technique we are going to make sure that that stays in that 45 above the horizontal 90. So this is where the horizontal 90 is. This is hair that is in the 45 above the horizontal 90. So, so you can see, I am going to be working with it right here. And I am going to switch back to my artist series shear, my absolute favorite shear. And I am going to be coming in and removing just a little bit of this hair. So I am going to take my guide from one of the other pieces of hair that I've cut, see it? 
I'm going to put it into my fingers, slide past it, and I'm going to come in with my artist series shear and start to slide out. So now that I have one bevel done, I'm going to move on to my next bevel and just make sure that I am radiating from the top of the crown with those little pie shaped sections that are called bevels. Ugh. Jacqueline, you love those shears? I love those shears. They're my absolute favorite thing. So look on the next one, can you switch to the opposite side so we can see your hand position a little bit more? You got it. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. So I am going to come in. I'm going to come from underneath. And I am going to, there we go. We can see my hand position right here. Do you see how my hand position is? I'm at 45 above the horizontal 90. And now I just wanna come in with my shear and start to open and close on the way out. I'll slide past that guide and I'll start to just slide cut and move that hair off. So do we see again? Oh, nice question. Cindy, I would stay with these similar techniques and start always from the crown down. That's my personal preference, but I also think it's so important for our guests to get that like major impact right away. Do you know what I mean when I say impact? What does impact mean to you? Type it in the chat box. So impact for me is when you are able to see a result right away. And I think our guests are so used to us cutting wet, cutting in the back, and they are going to have this huge impact by seeing a result that happens right away. So we're gonna to continue to work through these last two bevels. We'll take a bevel. We will layer it to the crown right here. We will elevate at that 45 above the horizontal 90, grab a little piece from the front so we can see where our guide is, slide past our guide, and now we're going to come in and just start to move the hair out of the way. So third bevel in the back, we have one remaining. We will go in there and Take the hair so we layer it to the crown. And then we will be able to just move that hair out of the way. Remember where my guide is? It's coming from these other sections. And we will just be able to slide through that hair. So I do still choose to use a razor at some points in time. But we also want to just be able to practice with these shear techniques so that we can give any guest this haircut. So we are able to use this on anyone, even if they've had a result in the past that they are like kind of frightened to use the razor. We can always start off with a shear cut for sure. But if you can see, what we're creating here is we're creating a little bit of just like beautiful movement so she could actually wear it however it is that she wants to. I love that if I open it up on this side, I open up a little bit more of the, of the color as well. Oh, Michelle, that's a beautiful point. Starting in the front gives the, the clients a chance to process their new look. Yeah, that's exactly what I love about it as well. It starts to become so collaborative at that point. So if she had finer or thinner hair, would I elevate the hair higher than 45 degrees above 90 to elongate? So I love where your mind's at, but what we're going to try to stick with is we're gonna to try to stick with that 45 above the horizontal 90 in this cut because it's starting to give us the shape that we want. So not only does layering help preserve length at certain elevations, it also gives us a shape. 
So we talk about this a lot over at Redkin with our principle-based design, but that 45 above the horizontal 90 is actually known as something called scooping graduation. So it creates this nice, beautiful, like rounded shape in the top of the hair, but it also scoops out some of that weight that's in the, the perimeter of the hair. And then do I connect the top to the bottom? Now, that's going to be based on client choice, right? So finer hair, maybe not. Do we see the silhouette that it's creating? I can step to the, the side here so you can see the silhouette that's right here. So we may not choose to connect the top to the bottom, but if they do have enough hair, we can go ahead and we can go in and we can use our shear. Maybe we'll go back to the slide cutting shear and we'll go in and we will pinch some of this hair. We will elevate some of this hair and we will start to remove that weight to connect top to bottom. So I love where your brains are at. You're already starting to see how you can take this and you can make it your own and you can customize it to each guest. So, I mean, I love this look as well. I think shags for everyone. They are one of the most easily customized haircuts because you can come in there and you can make sure that the layering around the face, that the fringe is living exactly where that guest wants. So if you still have questions, please type them in the chat box. I wanna be able to answer all of your questions before we end up here today. Oh, thanks, Rebecca. Thank you for joining. Thanks, Liz. Thank you, everybody. I'm really happy to see that everyone is on today. So again, we'll take another and we will start to kind of carve this out. So besides the slide cutting shear, what shears was I using? So I was using the Artist Series slide cutting shears, the Samvia Artist Series shear, and the reversible blender today. All of these shears, listen to me, all of these shears are 40% off for the next week. So 40% off, I think is pretty much what I get them for as a Sanvia ambassador. So you would be receiving an amazing value to go and get those shears right now. And just to adjust one little thing, they're 40% off today. Yeah. You said Absolutely. all week. I just don't want them trying to go on on Thursday and they're not there. So 40% off today. 40% off today. And then weren't they from the 9th to the 15th? Um, so yeah. the 9th to the 15th, there'll be other um, other sales of up to 40% oh. off. Up to 40% off. Got yeah. it. So only 40% off today. So if you want them, grab them today. Thank you, yes, Andrew. No problem. So yes, Adam, this is exactly that. This is a cross between a connected and disconnected cut. So what's great about a cut like this is that even if it is not all connected, like I cannot necessarily pick up every single layer and connect it to every other layer, this is a cut where it is visually blended. So everybody say visually blended in the chat box. So visually blended is what we are looking for when we're looking for this haircut. Now, only at this point in time, after I finished all of the layering, after I finished the fringe, am I going to go in there and cut the perimeter to whatever her desired length is? So at this point in time, our perimeter, we could start to change that and we could start to move the perimeter up wherever it is that she wants it to live. And again, remember, that we have our other tools that we can go in there and we can start to remove just a little bit of weight if we need to. So I wanna show you one other shear that I use to get a real similarity into that razor cut. I like to use this shear called an Invisiblend shear. Are you familiar with the Invisiblend shear? Yeah, so the Invisiblend shear gives you even more of that visual blend. So there are only 23 teeth in this, but then the greatest thing about the Invisiblend is that this bottom blade, look at it. The bottom blade is blunt. So these little like convex teeth come in here and they can take out hair 
even blonded hair to where you can't see the line that you've placed in there. So let's say I wanna take this piece and I will come in and I'll just do a little tap on my way out to blend it in, softens it right up. Let's say I wanna take this piece where I have the transition between the layers and the length. I'm going to pinch it. I'm going to be able to come in here and just tap on the way out and just release a tiny bit of hair. This sheer gives you the same result as slicing into the hair. So I absolutely love it. When I first got this shear, I wasn't sure I would use it that much. And now it's one of my shears that I pick up almost every haircut. Awesome. Does the mannequin hair affect my scissors? Susan, that's such a great question. You know, what I actually do with these shears is Samvia recommends a specific sharpener. So I send them back to get them sharpened. Uh, probably around twice a year because I'm working both in the salon and on education. So my Instagram handle, yes, Andrew will put up my Instagram handle for you. My Instagram handle is my name, it's at Becca Bradshaw. And I would love to connect with you a little bit more on my Instagram if you want to come over, if you want to ask any questions that you do have. Um, I will be posting photos of this haircut once we have her all styled out beautifully. Remember hand styling with the money symbol? Yes, Twyla, you need a pair of these shears. It is one of those things that is going to save your life behind the chair in both these haircuts, but also on your barber cuts, especially with your blonded barber cuts, because you know how difficult sometimes those are to look blended. That's the perfect shear for this. Excellent. So again, just to recap our cut really quickly, we started in the front. We used a elevation of 45 above the horizontal 90 to create this like beautiful little curtain fringe that you see. Then we went in with our reversible blender to go in and create that texture so she has enough movement that we can hand style it. Then we created layers from both sides in the front and then in four bevels in the back using a combination of an effleurage technique where we're back cutting. We use an out cutting technique as well. And then we used a slide cutting technique to give us our sheer cut shag. Excellent to see everybody today. If you have any questions, please type them in the chat box so we can answer them for you. Yeah, amazing job, Becca. I feel like you probably answered every single question. That was amazing. Like, I don't know that we've ever, even us, <laughs> me and Sam, I don't know that we've ever been so completely connected to the chats and like making sure all the, the uh, questions got answered. Just an amazing job, beautiful work, and definitely something that's very approachable because that's the thing, like very often with these, modern shags they look so technical they look so crazy how do i get that look but you made it so simple so approachable that i can just see from the chats they're just constant comments of how how easy you make this seem so um, congratulations and amazing amazing class we love our attendees here at Samvia. We want to make sure that you get what you need and that you get your questions answered thank you so much for joining us yeah, for sure. So guys, please go check out Beck Bradshaw on her social, stay connected with you. As you can tell, she is very open to helping and supporting the community. So make sure you connect with her. Becca, thank you so much for offering your time to the community to just share this incredible haircut. Great tips. Like I said, just so many questions were answered today that are common haircutting challenges, even if it doesn't have, apply to a shag. So beautiful class. Thank you so much for being here today. And um, stay stay backstage just for a minute and I'll uh, pop back with you as I finish up. Absolutely. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>